If I sound quick and to the point in this video, that's the goal. I just took so long filming the video that I did before this and we gotta make it snappier here. Rosie here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. It is the nonfiction on booktube tag. I somehow have never done this one. It was originally created by Olive of a Book Olive. I will link her video down below. I don't think I've ever actually been tagged in this. If you have tagged me, I just didn't see it. Please let me know as well and I will reference that. But I'm just doing it because the questions are really interesting and I'm so excited about nonfiction November. There's no prompt to explicitly tag people, so I'm going to do it now at the beginning. I am tagging Brandon's bookshelf, Camilla Hastayi Books. I'm also going to tag Charlotte of Coiny Reads and Michelle Lexi. I don't think any of them have done this tag, and they all have such interesting nonfiction reading tastes that I would love to hear their answers. And as always, if I have not tagged you but you would like to do this tag, please consider yourself tagged. I always want to see everyone's answers. For the questions, number one, how much nonfiction do you read? According to the story graph, this year I have read 30% nonfiction and 70% fiction. I expect that that will go up slightly as we still have nonfiction November to finish. On average, it looks like about three out of 10 books this year. However, last year, 2020, I read 36% nonfiction. And in 2019, I read 43% nonfiction. I'm not sure if it's correlation or causation, but I think since I started making booktube videos, I've been reading less nonfiction. And that's, uh, well, something that maybe I wanna work on. Question two. What kind of nonfiction videos do you make slash do you want to make on booktube? I haven't made a ton of videos explicitly on nonfiction. I've done a few book reviews, I think. I made a reacting to one star reviews of my favorite nonfiction history books video back in August. I'll link that up here. That one was pretty cool. And then of course I do just talk about nonfiction in my videos that aren't explicitly about nonfiction. TBRs, vlogs, wrap-ups, I'd say almost all of them involve at least a little bit of nonfiction. I do have some sorts of ideas about more dedicated nonfiction content that maybe I want to make in the future. Again, I just am so filled with passion for it after reading so much good nonfiction this month that I have all sorts of thoughts in my head and as soon as I figure out how to coalesce them into actual videos, you will start seeing them. Question three, what's your favorite subgenre of nonfiction? I don't think I could ever pick just one favorite because there are so many and I like so many of them, but depending on what I'm in the mood for. For example, I really like political, I guess I want to call them like social justice type writing, writing on feminism, on anti-racism work, on the treatment of various marginalized people throughout the world and throughout society. All of that sort of writing is really interesting to me. I find it so, so rewarding whenever I read it. However, it can also be very heavy and if I'm not feeling in the mood for it, it can be very hard to make myself read it. So that one's like, Sometimes it's my favorite. On the other hand, I also really, really like history nonfiction writing, especially older history, like Middle Ages and Renaissance and older than that type of history, because I find it weirdly comforting. Obviously, awful things happen in a lot of books about history. There's a lot of mistreatment of people, but for whatever reason, the distance through time means that I can read about those awful things without feeling the pain acutely. I know that it was the past, and I'm not saying that suffering didn't matter in the past, but that when I read about how some marginalized group is being treated terribly somewhere in the world right now, all I can think about are all of the people who are currently experiencing this suffering and not last year, right now being affected by this. I don't know if this is a common take or if this is a weirdness of my brain. Let me know down below. Question four, do you have a favorite nonfiction book? I, I really could not possibly pick one. There are just so many different ones that I like. Honestly, it would be, they would, it would be superseded so often. I think something's my favorite, then I read something else incredible. Question five, what do you think keeps people from wanting to read more nonfiction? I, this is a super canned and common answer, but I think there is some truth to the fact that for a lot of people, they hear nonfiction and think textbook like I had to read at school. And I'm the first to admit, I would never read a textbook for fun. Hell, 
I never actually read the textbooks when I was supposed to be studying them. And there's so much more to nonfiction, but I don't feel like a lot of people are really necessarily aware of that. That being said, I do think there is a bit of an issue with the fact that it is branded as nonfiction. I don't know where that comes from. I assume publishers, maybe? Maybe just the media in general? We tend to think of it as, oh, I read fantasy or romance or classics or sci-fi or literary fiction or nonfiction. And that's really not an accurate representation of things. It makes it seem much more limited in scope than it really is. There are just as many subgenres in nonfiction as there are in fiction, but we don't tend to talk about them as much. And I think that makes it easier for people to be put off if they do try nonfiction. Think about it in reverse. What if we talked about fiction writing and we didn't distinguish between genres or types of writing much at all in the popular media? It was just fiction. If someone picked up a Dickens novel and went, man, this is not for me. I do not like this style. It's just so long. It is so slow. I don't care about this text. I don't actually like Dickens, which is why I'm using it as an example, but you could use any author. In the current way that nonfiction is presented, you might go, oh, I don't like fiction. This is a fiction book. I do not like it. Maybe I don't like the whole area. Whereas really, maybe you don't like Victorian classics. It's sort of a weird way of putting things, but I do wonder sometimes if we talked about the subgenres of nonfiction more, it would counterintuitively draw people in as opposed to making it seem complicated and close people out. Question six, why do you like nonfiction? Again, such a trite answer, but I just love learning things. I find it so interesting and fulfilling to learn about things that I don't know. And that, that sounds so basic, but seriously, I will watch all manner of random YouTube videos about topics that I realistically have no actual interest in because I'm curious about them and I'm curious about how they work. And even if I don't want to do the thing, I still want to know about it. And it's the same with books. I love anything that will give me a greater depth into something I already know or introduce me to some topic that I have never really thought about. It's just really fun. Question seven, what's a nonfiction book you read because of booktube? I'm going to go with Why Women Have Better Sex Under Socialism and Other Arguments for Economic Independence by Kristen R. Godsey. I read this I think back in the spring or maybe early summer with Emerita by the Book and Katie Reads and Rants and it was really, really interesting. It was really, really good. I read it partly to buddy read it with them, but I'd also bought it in the first place because I think it was Lauren Wade and Jean Bookish Thoughts really recommended it and really liked it. I tend to find any books about feminism and social issues that they recommend really good. And in this case, it totally confirmed that. It was phenomenal. I think there's a live show that's still up somewhere, maybe on Emrita's channel, that I will link to up here if you would like to hear my full thoughts at the time of reading. Question eight, what's the best nonfiction book you've read lately? I'm filming this partway through nonfiction November and I've just finished Smoke Gets In Your Eyes and Other Tales from the Crematory. I just finished it yesterday and it was really, really fantastic. This is of course by Caitlin Doughty, who has a YouTube channel, Ask a Mortician. I have been a really big fan of Ask a Mortician for a while now. I think I have seen every video she has made at least once because there's something about her tone that just fascinates me. She has this way of talking about things and her content is interesting in and of its own right. It's all about death and the death industry and coming to terms with death and that sort of thing. Very, very cool stuff. So I was familiar with her content and Smoke Gets In Your Eyes is her first book, I think. It was a memoir about her early time in the funeral industry. Despite knowing so much about it already from her videos, this book was still just such a pleasure to read. I think it all comes down to her voice and her tone and her style of writing and her type of humor just gets me, it works for me. I was feeling like I can't put the audiobook down. Don't think I mentioned that, I listened to the audiobooks which Caitlin herself narrates and highly recommend doing that. Seriously, the type of book that makes me find little chores around the house so I can keep listening because I don't wanna stop. Question nine, what are some of your nonfiction reading goals? I don't think I had any specific nonfiction goals for 2021 and I haven't locked in my goals for 2022 yet. I'm sort of starting to think about how can I put goals in place that would encourage me to read more nonfiction and some of my longer nonfiction 
section because I think I've been favoring a bit the really short quick ones and I want to give myself space to have books that are bigger and longer and more involved because I do really enjoy those but I'm not totally sure what form those goals are going to take yet. Question 10. What's your advice for incorporating more nonfiction into your reading diet? Maybe it's just the videos I watched. I feel like pretty much everyone has said this already but I'm gonna reiterate because I really do think it's very good advice, and that is to figure out what you care about and then read nonfiction about it. I almost guarantee, no matter what your interests in the world, there are probably many nonfiction books about them, and there's probably even many different types of book within that interest area. You could read memoirs by people who are famous in the field or who have had unique experiences in that whatever the interest is. You could read more technical books about how something works or the history of it. It's really, really broad. So pick something you like and start reading about it. Note what you like, note what you don't like, use that to guide you to more books, and before you know it, you'll be a complete nonfiction reader. There is then the bonus prompt, give some recommendations of nonfiction booktube channels that you love. I'm going to list these out pretty quickly and they will all be listed down below. So if you like to check any of them out, check in the description box because otherwise this would take forever. The channels I want to mention are A Cup of Books, I'm Rooted by the Book, Anna Moshoshin, Bethan Berninga Sokolar, Bookmarks and Breadsticks, Brandon's Bookshelf, Camilla Hastayi Books, Koini Reed, Reads, Fraser Simons, Springboard Thought, Fully Booked, Jeremy Fee, Joe Loves to Read, Katie Reads and Rants, Literarily Smitten, Margaret Pennard, Mariana Mass Books, Michelle Lexi, Triumphal Reads, and Very Literary Carrie. If you heard any channel names in there that you don't already know and love, make sure you check them out down below and go watch their videos. And leave me a comment. Do you consider yourself a nonfiction reader or not? And how much nonfiction would you have to read for that to change? And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like down below. If you would like to see more of my videos, please hit subscribe and thank you for watching.